Welcome to the Elite BSC Podcast, where our entire focus is helping commercial janitorial contractors succeed. You want a growing company, a thriving team, and healthy profits, and we are here to help. My name is Jordan Tong. I'm the founder of Elite BSC, a company dedicated to helping janitorial companies grow and thrive. I also serve as CEO and one of the owners of France Building Services. France is a janitorial company employing nearly 600 people. Since 2007, we grew from 1.5 million to more than 20 million in annual revenue and built what I think is one of the best teams in the world. The goal of Elite BSC in this podcast is to give owners in the industry a vision of where their company can be and the information and tools to get there. I want to share what I have learned over the years to make this a reality for you. Hey, fellow janitorial business owners, it's Jordan Tong here, your host for the podcast. So um, a couple of quick things. First of all, before before we dive into the topic today, um, if you haven't, I would appreciate and would it would be awesome if you could do a like and subscribe to the podcast on whatever podcast platform that you use. Um, it helps us improve our rankings and um i realize it's a selfish ask but uh but i'm asking also on um june 5th through the 7th we have a a sales and growth workshop specifically for for commercial cleaning owners ideally people that are you know half a million in revenue on up um and that'll be june 5th to the 7th you can go into the elite bsc website um and click on the member resources tab and there's a live workshops button that you can click on uh, to learn a little bit more about that we have um we have limited amount of seating but there's there is still room available uh for that if you sign up so today's uh topic that we're going to talk about is something that i have thought a lot about over the years and there's you know, early on, if you listen, if you go back and listen to the very first podcast episode um, and hear me talk about the story of the organization, I really wrestled early on with being a bit too success oriented to the detriment of other things. Part of that was just immaturity and ignorance on my part, and part of it was probably a moral deficiency um, that was going on. So. But what I want to talk about today, why your janitorial company matters, I've got nine reasons I want to to point out that, hey, for those of you that are that own a company in the commercial cleaning space, there's why you do this is super important. And there are lots of benefits or payoffs for doing what you do, for taking the risks that you do, for sacrificing every day and going out and, and making this thing happen and building this business, it matters. And it matters beyond just the money that you can make. And I, and I want to explain what, what some of those reasons are. And I think that it, there's a sense in where us in the cleaning industry have a unique um, opportunity to show some things to the world that other industries don't have. So, so I've got nine reasons why your janitorial company matters. They're in no particular order. So um, let's just let's kick it right off with with number one. So having a commercial cleaning company, it gives you have the opportunity to give value and meaning to what many consider to be a menial job or a job that's beneath <laughs> people. So you know if you, you talk about someone who's hard up for money or one of the the jobs that are on the lowest of the totem pole, almost always, cleaner or janitor is makes the list, and you know that makes the top three of jobs lowest on the totem pole. And so there's a sense in where people can get the idea that that's not a job that matters much. Um, it's not a job that has a lot of dignity that goes along with it, um, or meaning or value that's sort of infused in into into that role. And what I would argue, um, and you'll maybe pick up on this a little bit, so just to put my cards on the table. So I am a Christian. I'm a follower of Jesus. And so my Christian worldview in many ways influences or shapes the way that I think about some of these things. Um, and this is this is one of those that I, I, I'm convinced that human beings are unique and different and that part of what is unique about how we were made is that meaning and value is very important to us. And our work is very central to what we do and finding meaning and value in that. And so 
what I think we have an opportunity to do in our industry is to push back on that that narrative from society that janitorial work is menial work that doesn't carry a lot of dignity and value with it. And that's something that, that we get to do and we ought to do. I think it's an obligation for us as leaders in the industry uh, to champion that. So that's number one. Number two is you have the opportunity to provide a job that makes someone feel at home. So and you could also maybe you know uniquely you say this that you you can create a place or create a place of employment that cares for people that people feel welcomed to be there. Um, most of the people that we hire, particularly at the cleaner level, are coming from personal lives often that are not easy. And as business owners, one of the really cool things that we get to do is shape a place really however we would like to, and then we get to invite other people to come along and participate in that. And so, again, some of these, why your janitorial company matters, it also puts a little bit of obligation on you to, to work on these things in your company, but you get to, to be a place that that people want to be. And, man, that, that can change lives. That can impact your community locally. You just the blessing that comes along with that has a ripple effect from the people that your company touches. So that is number two. Number three, that you are, as a cleaning business owner, you're in a unique position to better the lives of countless people. Now, this this sort of goes along along with the last one. Maybe it's an, an extension of it in that you have the ability to care for people and impact people in a way that other people don't have. So if you're not a business owner and you're not running an organization, you don't have this ability as much. Maybe you volunteer, maybe you participate in something at your church or in your community or whatever, and you can't impact lives. But literally, like you you get people coming and going in your door that spend a decent amount of their life, their, their waking hours, with you or for you, and you have the opportunity to care for them in a really unique way. Um, and I think that's a both a blessing and a burden that we bear to, to make that happen. So that's number three. Number four, this one's really cool. I've talked about this a lot on, if you go to EliteBSC.com, you look at some of the articles, or if you go to our YouTube channel. I've talked about this a lot in the past, <clears throat> that we have the, as business owners, we have the power to create opportunities for people that match maybe the desires and skill sets of that individual and help foster success for them. This is probably my favorite thing about being an entrepreneur and being a business owner is that I get to I get to know somebody and then I get to shape and craft and work on a job that fits that person so that they thrive and the company thrives because of them in that role. Now, I don't always get to do this. You know, it's, this would be really difficult at the cleaner level. It's much easier as you move up in the organization to make this happen. Although I think there are ways to do this at the cleaner level um, as well. But this is so fun. And when you see somebody who is making more money than they've ever made or succeeding in a way professionally that they've never succeeded before, working in your company, under your system, under your leadership, the reward is, is unbelievable. And, and really what you're doing for that person is equally awesome. So that's number four. Number five, and again, all these are loosely related, is that as a janitorial business owner, really this is this is going to be true for any entrepreneur and leader, is that you get the ability to mentor or influence people around you in a unique way. So partly because you write the paychecks, you have an audience in front of you every single day that you get the privilege of leading. And and this is kind of a scary um, a thought. Uh, you know, sort of like when, when you think about being a parent, you have, in my case, we have six kids. And I think there's six lives that I have been tasked with <laughs> shaping and molding to get them to a responsible, uh, virtuous adult, right? And that's a little bit, the weight of that is sometimes crushing. <laughs> But in the same, in a similar manner, as business owners, we have a, a responsibility 
um, and the privilege, again, to mentor or influence people and shape the lives of people through their direct interaction with us as we lead them. And if your company gets large, you know, that can happen filtered down into the organization by leader, you leading other leaders who then lead the people that are working for them. Okay, that's number five. Number six, this one's probably an odd one for some of you to think about, and we don't normally think about it in these terms, but our society is largely shaped by institutions. So when I say institutions, so like think about uh, the media is an institution, um, Hollywood is an institution, higher education is an institution, government is an institution. Um, those would be some examples. I think that the church and the religious community are, are various institutions. And these various, what I would call like formalized or organized institutions are what shape culture. They shape our communities. They shape our lives. They, they in, in some ways, they, for good or bad, shape our value systems, etc. So when we own a business, and particularly as our business grows within our communities that we work in, the larger our influence becomes, and we become a an institution, albeit a different one from some of the others, that has some level of impact in our community. And the, the larger we grow, and this is one of my personal reasons for wanting us to grow, is that we can make that happen more. We can have more influence in a positive way. And you, you see this, like on a you know on a, a national scale, you see some of these companies. Um, like Apple would be a, a good example. Like they have, they have shaped our culture in some ways. That they, because of their institutional power, they have had ripple effects all across society. Now, I don't expect anybody in the janitorial industry to have the level of impact at the scale that Apple has. But nonetheless, we do have institutional impact in our communities that we serve in. And I think that's real and legitimate. And I think it's a reason for growth. And I think we can be a positive um, influence on the communities that we serve in. So that's number six. So number seven is to build wealth. So this is um, building wealth or making money is not a dirty phrase. Um, I think building wealth is a good thing. It's one of the measures of success. Like it, it lets us know that our company is doing well. It's performing well. It's doing what it ought to do. It's pleasing customers well. Um, and wealth is it's a tricky thing. Um, there's you know the 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 Bible verse that people say all the time. But, well, people will wrongly say the um, money is the root of all evil, and it's actually. The verse says that the love of money is the root of all evil. And so we do want to be careful as we build wealth to not fall in love with and let that be our thing that we prize more than anything else. And we find all of our security in our money. Um, but building wealth is a good thing, and how we use it can be a really good thing. We can create more businesses. We can make investments um, into things. Um, there's, there's lots that we can do. And that leads us into number eight, which is to give generously. So when we build wealth, it also allows us to give generously. So I think about in our, our organization, our company has, has grown a lot over the years, and the amount of income that drops to the bottom is now significant. So when I first started, we were a million and a half dollar company, and this, you know, this year we'll do over twenty million dollars, and our profit margins have gone up over time. So there's a lot more money at the bottom, but that also means we're able to give in such a way that makes a substantial impact um, in various organizations. And we, to be honest, we try to do most of our giving locally, so we're impacting stuff in our community. And I've been able to see some of that happen, and it's really cool. It's really cool to be able to significantly contribute to things knowing when I give this, when I help in this way, um, we're able to change and, and shape whatever, you know, whatever nonprofit or um, whatever it is that we're investing in, if we're able to give, the, the impact we can have is, is tangible. So number nine, this will be the last one. Um, I'm sure we could come up with you know, nine more after this, is that as business owners and with our cleaning company, we have the opportunity to leave a legacy. So there's a lot of ways you can think about leaving a legacy. You know, one of those can be the the business itself, the institution itself, the culture that we have created. So we're we're building something ideally that lasts beyond ourselves. 
So I, I want this company. It was started just shortly after I was born. But I want it to continue to exist and thrive and flourish after I die. In order to do that, we, we have to be good stewards over it, and we want to leave a legacy, a good legacy. Um, so there's that piece of it. There's also just the, the moral legacy that we leave and, and how we handle the organization and the values and the virtues that we infuse in here. Um, and again, I think the impact of this legacy, so for us, so for me as a father, like I think about this related to my children, but also think about the people whose families are tied to people in the organization. Um, and then potentially the people that the organization will bless down the road. And so having a forward thinking mentality on this, um, I think is wise for us as business owners. And I hope these, these things that, you know, my goal in this was to hopefully give you a bit of inspiration to, to maybe help you pick your head up out of the drudgery of the day to day and the whirlwind of all the stuff going on and see that, Hey, what, what you do matters. Your company matters. The impact that you can have is real and the benefits are uh, significant, and we shouldn't ever, um, we shouldn't ever take any of that that for granted. So, listen, if I can uh, ever be of help or encouragement to you, feel free to reach out to me. You can find contact info at elitebsc.com. Um, I hope this is helpful and encouraging, and maybe even a bit inspiring. And I hope you go out and crush it uh, this next week in your company. And until then, we'll see you next time. If you found the information in this podcast helpful, please like and subscribe on whatever podcast platform that you're using. If you would like more resources or help to grow your cleaning company, head over to EliteBSC.com. We have loads of articles, videos, free tools, coaching options, and a lot more. If your company is greater than 500 k in revenue and you want to take your learning experience to the next level, check out our mastermind group. You can learn more about that at EliteBSC.com slash mastermind.